day to you. Steve Maier here, and we have some parking lot wisdom. Because I just got off the phone with a client, and I'm about to meet with another client. But this is what do we do in an emergency? What do we do when we're emotionally overwhelmed? We don't know what to do. Perhaps we find out we're getting sued. We're losing custody of our children. Uh, our bank accounts have been drained. But there's something that puts us in a state of not knowing what to do. Or better yet, we know exactly what to do, but it's a reaction. It's a panic. It's a fear. It's an expression of our anxiety. Remember, once again, in our day and age, in our society, we see anxiety as normal. So what's a checklist for us to go through? And for me, this is paramount. You know, and I, and I was telling this client that I was talking to is that I have a go bag. I have an emergency go to for what happens when I don't know what to do. And it's very, very clear, very simple. In fact, it comes a lot influenced from 12 step recovery. Uh, but I know a lot of people don't have access to that or there's different expressions of it or people have a problem with it. But absolutely paramount for me. So number one, every single moment of emotional pain, physical pain, stress in your life will pass. But how you deal with that passing is what is going to shape who you are for your next event, your next point of stress, your next point of elation. Because remember, it's not about living life is always good and on top. It's about living life on life's terms in an even keel of who you are, an expression of who you are, no matter what your surroundings are. If there's a high or a low, the more spiritual you are, the more serene you are, you stay on an even keel. So the number one is to know that it will pass. But the thing is, is we're having this overwhelming feeling with our bodies, our minds, our emotions saying that it won't. And so the next thing that I do is number two is I pick up the phone and I call somebody. So no matter what, my mind is always telling me that, that that's not going to help, that that's not going to get me my $10,000 back. That's not going to fix the car that's broken down. That's not going to fix me missing or hurting or in pain or a bone is broken. But in order for me to go through the pain in my head, the event that's happening in my head, that's so confusing that if I think I can do that alone. Man, I'm insane. I need to go through that with somebody. Now, better yet, what's more important is, you know, I have these groups where, where we all connect. I belong to a men's group. I've created men's groups. I have a huge amount of points of access for me to pick up the phone and call somebody. And one of the reasons for that is one of the worst days in my life. This was about six years ago. And uh, I had found out I lost, it was seven years ago. I, I found out that I had lost contact with my kids, that it was this horrible, you know, time and the, you know, these horrible struggles that we go through with custody and all that sort of stuff. And I got back from my attorney's office and I had a huge network of people to call. I called everybody in my phone that day and nobody picked up. I mean, I'm talking like 23 people. It's insane. And it was for about an hour that I sat alone with that pain. Now that's a different story. And it turned out to, to be really beneficial in some ways. But at that point, I knew I needed to have a rock solid group of men that I could call upon at any time. That's like our groups like Men's Development Excellence or TSL Online. These are huge groups where 24 hours a day, there's people that will pick up that phone. Huge, massive. The next thing that I do is I do something for somebody else. If I am having trouble in pain myself, if I have broken my wrist, if I've broken my hand, these things have happened. If I get a concussion, if I lose custody of my kids, if there's something that is so massive that it is messing with me on a physical level, on an emotional level where I don't know the next thing to do and I want to run, 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 what do I do? I be of service to somebody else. I get out of myself and I do something for other people. That, well, as well as talking to other people, gives me the clarity to see myself and my situation in its full perspective with my own values, with my choice rather than my reactions. All right. So that's very, very important as the third thing I do. The fourth thing that comes into play when I have an emergency is I don't act. I realize that every single one of the things that happens in my life, I may think it's an emergency that that is an emotional pain, that is physical pain. I give it five minutes. It can wait five minutes. If it can't wait five minutes, maybe the wiser decision is to let it wait a day. Maybe I need to let it wait a week. Maybe I need to let it wait a month. But the thing is, is my pain is always telling me to act. It's always telling me to go, 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 go. And I know 
that, you know, a true emergency will show itself. If I need to jump out of a burning car, I need to jump out of that burning car. If I need to, you know, run from, if my foot is broken and in a certain position, I need to move it. But after that, I need to think. I need to get out of my pain so I can be myself. All right. So that's the fourth thing. The fifth thing that is super important is that I need to take inventory of my values and I need to take actions based off of that. And that's very important. This is why I have a circle of friends. Making a decision about a point of trauma or pain in my life, a confusing point in my life, needs to be in line with what I believe. But when I'm in pain, when I'm confused, I have this overwhelming urge to go in a certain direction, I then make it impossible for me to think clearly with my heart, with my mind, with my greater values. So what do I do? I stop, number one, remember to review. I accept that this will pass. Any point of emotional or physical pain will pass. That can be very difficult. So what I do is then I pick up the phone. I talk to somebody. All right. I bounce it off of them. I get out of my head. Number three, I be of service. I put myself out there in the world so that, man, I, I you know, make a connection with somebody else outside of myself. Right. Very, very important. Right. Massively important. The, the fourth thing that I do is that, man, if anything else, I realize that I can give that five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. I realize that I need to give it the time. I don't need to react right away. If I need to make a decision, I can do it tomorrow. I can do it in 10 minutes. I can do it after I talk to five people. And then the fifth thing is that I want my actions, my decisions that are big, that are inspired by pain, that are rooted from pain, is to be able to, to, to reflect my highest values, the highest values of me. And usually I need a group for that to bounce it off of. So when we're in pain, gentlemen, let's make that a discipline. Let's stop making it about reacting and congratulating ourselves of that. We need to do that. We need to do that to survive. No big deal. But let's choose the higher road of the better man and cultivate that and work with it. In any case, any questions, comments, leave them here. Subscribe to our channels. Get involved with our groups. What we do here is we work as men. To be the better man on a daily basis in a community with, with so much to offer. In any case, there's so much of that that you can find at the free stuff link down below. Get involved. Steve Maeda signing off. Guys, live your full potential because it's out there waiting for you.